been a hell of a day, huh? It's been a hell of a week, man. I don't even know what to say. Come all you young rounders And a story I'll tell Of the promise of heaven And the warning of hell but Take heed where you ramble Or too soon you will go Way up on the hill flowers grow Well he met in the springtime What are we doing babe? We're gonna go stand on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. You've wanted to do this forever, and I think it's hilarious, but when in Rome. <laughs> you know, so. I'm not the only goofball that wants to come here just to do this, just to take a picture. So another pro of having a second vehicle is we can park here where it's easy to park, and then we can throw a cub in the Jeep, and we can go down to the corner where we're gonna stand in Winslow, Arizona. Standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona Such a fine sight to see There's a girl, my lord, in a flatbed pool Slowing down to take a look at me Oh, baby, don't say me He does not like Winslow. Well, he does not like standing on the corner. Well, it's a pretty janky town, I gotta say. Oh, oh. It's just small, small Route 66 town. Yeah, this is really like the only thing that there is here. But it's Dude. cool. I mean, but in Rome. this mural is pretty rad. Not gonna lie. I must say, that was definitely worth the stop. If you're driving through or past Winslow, you might as well stop, take a quick photo on the corner. There's really nothing else here. Um, we were stopped for like less than 10 minutes. It's worth it. It's super gimmicky and silly, but it's fun. So why the heck not? You're out here, you're in the middle of nowhere. What else are you gonna do, right? Probably shouldn't even be saying this because I don't want to jinx us, but knock on your Grand Wagoneer's wood grain. It seems as though the heat shielding is helping. It's about 97 degrees out. We haven't had any issues yet, but we have been making stops because, you know, we wanted to go to Winslow, Arizona, had to have Lincoln out one time. So we're just kind of cruising. We have all day to make it to our destination. What I've been doing too is opening the hood of the Jeep. Hopefully this is just because it's, you know, 100 degrees, but eventually in normal operating temps, it should be good, but no big deal. Open the hood while we're hanging out. It helps let a lot of that hot air out and then uh, gives you a better chance of not vapor locking. Uh. You know what guys, I'm an extremely, extremely patient person. My ability to woo-saw myself into calmness. I don't know anybody else that can do that, honestly, but there are some things that just set me off. And on a day like today, it has been a hell of a day when the Jeep is vapor locking again. The heat shielding is helping. The Ram is leaking coolant again. It is very hot outside. 
the day has been going okay. I've been chill. I've been ho, oh, oh. ho. And then I get into this parking lot and I'm trying to take the dog out of the truck so I don't forget about her. Obviously not wanting to do that. Grabbing the dog first, running to the trailer to unlock the door to put her in. And the sun is beating down on the RV locks and they won't disengage when that happens. And I know that that's the case, but it's just like that little straw, this big, that broke the camel's back. And I'm just like, piece of shit. You know what I mean? It's just one of those freaking days. It's been a hell of a day, huh? It's been a hell of a week, man. I don't even know what to say. It was another really rough travel day. We didn't even film when we first got here last night because we were just so beat, so over the day. But we made it to this beautiful, beautiful campground. We're way up here in the White Mountains of Arizona at Wynn Campground, and it is very peaceful and beautiful. And I'm probably talking way too loud because it's it's fine. Really quiet here. So yesterday we had more vapor locking issues. <laughs> And then I noticed um, the pressure regulator on the fuel rail was leaking on the Jeep. So I wiggled it and it literally blew up in my face and I got fuel in my face. Cool. And then the O-ring was what the issue was. So literally I had to wait about an hour and a half for a tow because she had gone ahead. And basically it was just a cluster of a day. It wasn't great, but we made it here. The spot is beautiful. We got a trailer backed into like a... 20 foot spot even though we're like 30 we've made a fit the jeep is there the ram is there mm -hmm. and then over here we have our friends nikki and brian we stayed at their house in prescott and then they're like you guys should come up here we're going camping and so it's absolutely stunning this area it is so beautiful yeah um and this campground is really nice like i said it's really peaceful really quiet it's like 14 bucks a night yeah um they have trash and they have potable water. There's no cell service here. Um, we are kind of getting Starlink reception. So Starlink worked great last night. It was like 100 down and like 15 up. And this morning it was a little uh, not as good. But I think it can change because of the Earth's rotation. I don't know. You Starlink experts will tell me. But so far we're stoked to have it. And we look forward to spending a long weekend here. So we got the trailer set up. Luckily, we're getting a good amount of sun. We do have some thunderstorms that are going to be rolling in all weekend. It's a little sketchy over here just because the angle of the camp spot. Uh, this is something I wanted to show you guys. This is called an ox block. You can see it right there. It's the strongest trailer jack block on the market. It holds up to 12,000 pounds. And it's made out of recycled plastic. Made in the USA. So if you haven't seen those, check those guys out. I will link it uh, in the description. And then this is kind of the setup. We got the smoker going. You do have a little fire pit right behind us, a table. And then we ran our Starlink here, which like we said, it's doing pretty well. And this is kind of what the trees look like. So we're getting our signal through here. So time will tell. One hour later. Oh my god, I'm excited about that! Ah! How much hail can our trailer withstand? 
Well, it's only a lot. They're small, though. Well, now we're just hanging out in the trailer, waiting for the storm to pass. It's pretty gnarly, but it seems like it might be passing pretty quickly. That was a two-second count. Yes, sir. No, it was a one-second. It was literally right above us. This hail is crazy. All right, guys. So we decided to brave the thunderstorm uh, after sitting in the trailer for a while and getting hailed on, and. Um, Kind of enjoying that because it's kind of fun for us, babe. Get in here. Oh, I have it on my mount, so Hi. she can't really. She's not really in it, but she's here. And we got Cub back here too. Uh, we we left our camp spot at Wind Campground, and us and our friends uh, we took the jeeps and we are going to Greer, Arizona. Small little town. Apparently, there's a couple restaurants, a couple shops. It was mostly to get out of the house, and then we might go to another town as well. But I'm not even going to attempt to tell you what it is because I think it's like Winchesterton Fieldville, Iowa. Springerdale Fieldville? Ville. I don't know. I think it starts with an S. I'll tell you when we get there. I looked at the map very quickly. Um, but yeah, so we're going to show you Greer right now. Initial thoughts on Greer. Um, we're driving in to the valley and these houses nice. are very cute. Very nice. Actually, I wouldn't even call them cute. They're just nice. Like, They're like really big log, log cabins. cabins. So guys, the Greer is very, very small, but it's really neat. A lot of cabins. I feel like it, it feels neater, neater, neater -er right now because it's like kind of rainy and cloudy, you know? They have two restaurants. One seems to be only open for dinner. Oh, and then there's another resort and restaurant right here. But it's just really cool. It's kind of cute. I don't know. What else would you say about Greer? I mean, yeah, it's just like a cute little cabiny mountain town, like really sleepy town. Um, not a whole lot going on. It seems like a nice place to come for like a little vacation, um, stay in a cabin and just, woo, and just enjoy the woods. All right guys, so we are staying here at Wing Campground, which is near Greer, Arizona, which is in the White Mountains. And we came here because our friends invited us and this place is freaking sweet. So I do wanna let you know that there are a lot of boondocking areas in this area and that's normally our jam, but our friends had booked here and we wanted to hang out with our friends. So we came here. Yeah, it's, a, it's 14 bucks a night, they have a reservation only loop but they have a first come first serve loop and um they also have like a group campsite that you can book out it's nice it's pretty big i think that because there's so much boondocking nearby that this camp spot itself doesn't really get very busy yes um because this is kind of like the ideal temperature the ideal time of year to come up here uh, yeah, it's, it's really hot in a lot of other parts of Arizona, so... It's actually warmer in the day right now here, too. Yeah, it's like 80 degrees. So you come up here, it's 9,300 feet, so pretty high elevation. Um, and it's really nice to escape that summertime heat. We, I mean, we've just really been enjoying it. There's lots of trees, uh, lots of birch trees and aspen, and then like tall pine trees. Yeah, your typical site comes with like a fire pit, a parking spot. Some are very small for just like tent spots. And then some are big for RVs and a picnic table. Mm -hmm. They do sell firewood. I think it's 10 bucks a bundle. Yeah. They do have outhouses. I don't think there's any running water in those outhouses, but there also is potable water here, which is nice, and trash. Yeah, there's spigots, like, kind of placed 
sporadically like throughout the campground, trash service, like Josie said. And um, if you pay to stay here, then you can actually go to a different campground nearby and get half off your dump fees. So uh, there isn't any typical cell service up here. So we went ahead and set up our Starlink um, and set it out towards like the field um, where there's like an open view of the sky. And we actually have been getting pretty good service it's been dropping well, kind of a lot yeah it's like 130 download and then like 20 up but the problem is, is that it's dropping a lot so we are able to get some work done it's just me editing so i can download music i can download files and everything like that i don't know about uploading a full video um but it's just nice to have that option it's nice to know that this campground does not have a solid internet connection yeah i mean if we were in one of these other sites where there's a bigger opening onto the sky we might have better luck a lot of activities to do around here is hiking mountain biking bird watching fishing is very popular there's tons of small lakes up here i don't know what kind of fish because we don't fish it's pretty nice there's some ohv areas like just a lot of nice forest roads so it's just honestly nice just being up here we feel like we're in montana or something it's kind of weird New day here, Jesse and Melissa, Adventure Endeavor. Obviously, Lincoln Endeavor makes the best adventure ever. We're still up here near Greer, Arizona, in the White Mountains. And today we are going to Sunrise Ski Area. So they have a whole lift system, skiing, snowboarding, what have you. And believe it or not, they also do mountain biking in the summer. We are not mountain biking today. We're just kind of checking it out. We're just enjoying our time with Lincoln. And uh, it is the only downhill mountain bike park in Arizona that has a lift system. So that's pretty freaking cool. Oh, and it looks like they have electrical hookups for RVs right there. Yes. I don't know if that's for like this little whatever, but I did see that they had for $35 a night, you could stay at Ski Resort. That might be it right there. I'm not sure. Could be. Yeah, we're about five minutes down the road from it. So, um, so we're just kind of doing that today. We wanted to get out of the house. Yet again, just thunderstorms all day. So we're kind of picking our window where we can go out and do some sort of activity. Um, but then we're kind of hanging out at camp, cooking good food, hanging out with friends. It's been extremely nice up here. Like, really, really extremely nice. Extremely nice. It's uh, at the end of July and we are getting temperatures up to 80 degrees about in the daytime, like each day. And then uh, down to high 50. So I'm trying not to sneeze. High 50s. High 50s at night. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think we mentioned earlier, but this campsite we're staying at is 9,300 feet. So that's what's really helping with the weather. The weather's later. Okay, so I've determined that this place is really cool, but it kind of feels like they struggle to make money and they struggle to get people to come. This is a Sunday. We're on a Sunday, right? In the middle of summer. And there's like, I don't know, maybe 15 cars in the parking lot. Seems a little run down. I don't want to be negative. Because it seems like it has a lot of potential and that it's very cool. But at the same time, it just needs like a little facelift, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's exactly what it needs. So what it needs is a facelift and they need to figure out how to get more people to come here in the summer. We don't know about the winter because it's the summer and this is our first time here.
Okay, babe, I think the suspension's too good. You can't even go fast enough. I know. I would have to probably go like 65. I don't want to go that fast without a little pitch. What do you think, Lincoln? <laughs> Safety first. Take the baby out of the truck. <laughs> but, you see that? A gnarly storm? We need to go. Yeah, we, we shouldn't have been doing this. We gotta go. Let's go. Come on, Lincoln.